Hey everybody, so I got a wild hair up my ass and uh, rearranged my bedroom and my office to give myself a uh, better workflow, kind of with a reasonable minimalist vibe in mind. Still have some, you know, stuff to do to finish up, but I have to keep producing these videos. I have to keep producing content, so I'm going to do that. You see this beer here? I feel like by doing all this work today, making my working life easier in terms of creative productivity, I deserve this beer. And this is the thing. Normally, I would just have a beer. And I'm gonna continue to normally kind of have a beer, more or less. But sometimes you need to limit and restrict things and only give them to yourself as a reward for something. There's a concept that comes from a blogger called Mr. Money Mustache, and he calls it hedonic adaptation. As, uh, as soon as you get like a new car, the new car feeling wears off. And the same thing as like, if you just keep on giving yourself stuff willy nilly, the magic of it wears off. And one way to get it back is by making yourself work for the reward. It's a simple concept, kind of uh, tied together in an interesting little bit of uh, phraseology. Let's head on over to the office, shall we? I don't want to. I don't want to have to edit this because I don't have time. So that's why I didn't do like a jump cut thing there. Right. Welcome, welcome. I've got my Korg LP350, 360, 380. I'm not sure which behind me. It needs to be fixed. It needed to be fixed for a long time now. But instead of having that kind of roll top type desk back there, I feel that making this a spacious music slash writing area is most ideally suited for what uh, what I plan to uh, to accomplish. But the thing about this LP380 is it's, it's great. It's got weighted keys and it only ran to about like nine, 900 something dollars when, when uh, my uh, grandmother bought it for me. And yeah, I just had a lot of fun with it. And as I was actually getting back into pianoing, because it's an off and on thing with me, I'm, it's because it's a difficult thing for me, even though I love it. It's also a love-hate relationship. It broke. And I don't know if anybody's had problems with the cords like that, where just the power supply breaks, or if that's just something to expect with electrical uh, equipment. But uh, getting it fixed is a bit of a pickle because you have to send it back to the manufacturer and I'm out of my warranty. I'm not sure how much it's going to cost. I then have a guy at a local music shop who's able to fix those things. But yeah, sort of bottlenecks in progress that are, uh, you know, definitely a, a, a part of the responsibility lies with me. But then again, it's just one of those things that happens. This is why I, I've, I've subscribed to all kinds of music channels and they say, you know, musicians and people like that, even though I don't consider most of a musician, but you know, these sort of creative types are terrible at keeping up with this sort of stuff. Instruments cost money to maintain. And I think one guy even uh, suggested you get instrument insurance. So what are my topics today besides all of this minutia from my life? Well, um, I pass by the radio. My grandfather listens to conservative talk radio, very silks. It's just like a station. I think it's 560 or something like that. And it's got Rush Limbaugh on there, who unfortunately now has, I think, lung cancer. Um, I think he smokes cigars. That could be why. But there's there's a number of reasons that could have happened. But today, I don't know who exactly was talking. It might have been Glenn Beck. But uh, yeah, this whole thing of participation trophies and... Uh, you know, they were making fun of liberals for saying everybody's a winner and everybody's special. And if everybody's special, nobody's special. And it's like, they're saying this as if it's some kind of big new observation, but it's kind of a, a hackneyed point by now. And I never really understood it to begin with because it's generally aimed at the millennial generation, the generation that I'm part of. And I never got a participation trophy and stuff is pretty damned uh, competitive in my view. And the people that get participation trophies they realize what it is. And I mean, the, the concept of a participation trophy is not to say, hey, you're a winner. It's to say, hey, you tried and that's worth something. So this whole thing of like, oh, it's this, th this, this big thing about our culture that, you know, it signifies the kind of uh, decadence that we've undergone and the weakening we've undergone. I don't know, especially coming from these sorts of folks who are just talking heads and former alcoholics and Mormons and Jesus. <laughs> so speaking of talk show type guys, we're Opie and Anthony engineered because I've been listening to a lot of 
old Opie and Anthony clips there. It's just, I love the, I love the show. I love when Jim Norton comes on and I draw inspiration from it to do this, this sort of thing. Uh, but what they did, uh, a segment they did was called Jocktober, and it's where they would make fun of radio shock jocks, right? And one of them is called, I forgot who these two guys were, but yeah, one guy had a creepy tendency to go to Thailand all the time, and the other guy just seemed kind of like gay, and they ripped on them for, for those two things, but they were also just overly nice about everything. But I noticed... You know, they started out at the same building as these guys. They'd hear the radio show piped in all the time. And if there's these duos, was this something that was being pushed by kind of uh, radio stations and the, the, the radio media world? Like some corporate decision board decided, aha, we need these, these duos of these, these two guys to banter. So... That's just kind of an interesting thought because I always felt that just because the show was so organic, the origin of Opie and Anthony is a very organic thing. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Just food for thought. And it's funny, uh, I was looking for articles yesterday, again, talking about talk shows that people, Joe Rogan's a podcaster, and I was, I, I was looking for articles about the benefits of reading, and one of them came from something called JRE Library, now, when I see JRE, I think two things. First, I think Java runtime and environment. Uh, and then I think, oh, Joe Rogan experience. And I click it, and sure enough, it's, I think, Joe Rogan's website with his podcasts and uh, uh, books by people who have been on his podcast and, you know, his supplements and things. And I'm like, holy shit, there's these little headlines. What is Joe reading right now? It, it, I know that Joe probably didn't have very much to do with crafting that aspect of it, but it's a whole new level of of douche chill. It's like Oprah book club for people. And I totally love that people are being encouraged to read through this, but it, uh, yeah. Yeah. It just gave me douche chills. And Joe says a lot of, a lot of goofy shit. <laughs> so it's like, am I really particularly thrilled to know what exactly Joe Rogan is reading? I don't know. Especially since I'm, uh, I'm a lifetime reader. I don't know if that's a bit of my ego coming in there, but uh, fuck. What is Joe Rogan reading now? Speaking more of blowhards and uh, just people who babble. So, you know, I was I was chilling at church yesterday because I had to take my granddad there to get him all socialized and churchy and Jesusy. And such and people there, you know, they talk and get on the subject of politics. And uh, one fellow there was very nice, but he made this this what I believe is a hacking observation. Well, Bernie's never worked a job outside of politics. I'm thinking that's a valid point, but why, you know, these conservative types of people they vote for Bushes, and the kind of conservative types of Democrats even. They vote for uh, for John Kerry types. John Kerry, I believe, went to Yale. He's an Ivy Leaguer. And I think he's known for uh, being kind of persnickety. And Bush Jr. came from a whole dynasty, like basically an American royal family. What jobs did he work? He was kind of a, a mediocre, to some say, terrible businessman. Uh, and he's a former alcoholic. He was kind of a, a, frat, a frat boy personality almost. And it's like, so you would, you would consider, you know, all of, you just throw away all of Bernie's experience in politics and, you know, his successful uh, career as a politician that, I mean, I'm not, I don't really give that much respect to politicians, but it is like something that you have to accomplish and understand psychology and kind of, you know, to be sort of like Bernie, even though I disagree with him on a lot it does seem that he's remained more or less steadfast in what he's been putting forward. I'm not ever going to vote for Bernie Sanders. Uh, that's not why I'm defending him. I'm just saying that given this, this notion of, well, this person is not qualified because they haven't worked in the real world. Well, politics isn't exactly the real world. And the sort of people that we vote for in general don't come from the real world. I mean, Kennedy was part of like a, like an Irish mob family, uh, and I think that they they were rich anyway. They're well established kind of Celtic clan, and uh, you know we had the Gipper, 
all these just upper crust folks that don't, I mean, he was an actor. Ronald Reagan was an actor. And a lot of people admire what he did as a president. I, did, I don't know enough about it, but I'm, I'm severely skeptical of trickle down economics nonetheless. But just the criticism people make are so surface level. It's like we didn't have any kind of, you know, good deep discussion. Not that I really care to. It's kind of fun to dip your toes into the water like that. But it's food for thought that this is kind of generally how conversations go. Well, again, apologies. A thousand apologies, Sahib or Sahibin or whatever the friggin' phrase is. Kimosara, Kinosara. There's some kind of phrase that you say. Thousand apologies, blah, blah. I'll just say a thousand apologies, my liege. Us, because this video has to be like this. It has to continue to be super abrupt because I'm tired and I still have a lot of shit I've got to do. You can probably hear the congestion in my voice. It's it's rampant. Probably because I got a, I got a vacuum. That's, that's another thing. So thanks so much for listening. If you like this babbling and would like to stick around to see it improve into something that's not a complete shit show, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button because it helps me out tremendously. Or, you know, call me an asshole. My main website is called FractalJournal.com where you'll find stories, ideas, and more. Take care, everybody.